Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the first ever episode of uh, South Convos. On today's uh, episode, on today's session, we're going to be having conversations around customer success and how that can help you stay in business. So uh, what we're going to do quickly is I'll uh, just introduce myself. I know you've probably never seen my face before. My name is Sonia Osayade and I'll be our host for today. Uh, with me to to uh, co you know have this conversation with me is Ifain Ifain oh, okay Ifain is already live. Hi Nora, hi Novo, hi Palumi. I can already see all of us. So I'll just quickly bring um, Ifain up now, and then would we'll kickstart Sean. Hi Nora. 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 Hi Thank you, Palumi. Palumi says it's an interesting topic. She's looking forward to it. Um, I think uh, if I might be having a little issue with his um, invite. Okay, invite, invite sent. So um, if I would be with us shortly. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello, Rashid. Hi, Tahir. Uh, Diva for Ima. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's amazing to have you here with us. Hi, Sonia. Oh, okay, I'll just be sure that you, you got the invite. Hi, Ifai. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Looking lovely as always. Thank you. Okay, yes. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, for people that don't know, uh, Ifai is our uh, customer success uh, manager here at FlexiServe, and he would be chairing the conversation today around customer success and how that can help you, you know, stay in business, irrespective of what kind of business you run, either you're in the education space or, you know, outside of it. So, I'll just give uh, the mic to him now to introduce himself. Ifai, over to you. All right. Thank you, Sonia, for that uh, introduction. My name is Ifani Umoke. I'm a customer success leader with over seven years of experience in customer success management. So if you want to ask what do I do, I specialize in helping customers achieve uh, value from the product. And on the business side, I help business retain customers and ensure that you know, they can create revenue funds. Right? Thank you, Sonia, for inviting me. I it's a pleasure to join you today. Who, who better to have this um, conversation with than uh, our very own in-house uh, expert? Okay, so the very first question, we put up, um, you know, stickers out and asked people to send us questions. And somebody asked a very important question. And they were, the person was, uh, the person asked, what, why customer success and not customer service? So just to jump right into it, why do we call it customer success and not customer service? What, is, what are the differences? All right, thank you for that question, Sonia. So uh, there's a big difference between customer service and uh, customer success, right? So I'll quickly give you uh, a, a, a very straightforward answer. When it comes to customer service, it's more reactive. And people, you know, we are already used to, people are already used to, you know, customer service. And, and when I say reactive, I mean customers would, you know, generally business will wait to see customers reach out to them to, you know, ask questions regarding their product or, you know, ask questions regarding support related issues and then they would have to respond. And that's more of a reactive approach. But customer success is more holistic, right? It's proactive in the sense that it, you, you have to, uh, you know, leverage data to, uh, to, to understand what challenges your customers are facing and have, you know, a, a, a structured strategy to help drive your customers to value. So it's more proactive, not necessarily waiting for customers to, you know, to complain that they have an issue. So, you know, going ahead, thinking ahead of the customer and ensuring that you're able to understand what challenge they might be experiencing and then, you know, finding the last solution to resolving that issue. So there are two uh, lines. Involved. Oh, fantastic. So for, for everything that you said, uh, so the primary difference between customer success and customer service is that customer service can be uh, reactive, but customer success is proactive, more in tune with, you know, having to solve problems even before yeah. they um, come about. Thank you very much okay. for that, uh, for that, Ifai. So um, jumping right into the topic, how can, um, you know, customer success help people and businesses, you know, just to stay in business, affect, you know, to affect the bottom line and help people um, 
continue to make money and have their businesses generate, uh, you know, revenue? Great. Thanks for that question, Sonia. So I'll give you uh, an analogy of what customer success means to a business or the value of customers, uh, customer success to a business. Uh, so just imagine that you have a basket and the basket, you know, represents the company, right? Or your brand or your business. And then water represents customers. And by the time you're trying to put water into your basket, into a basket and, you know, your expectation is that okay, maybe uh, the basket will be able to retain uh, the water you're putting in, into 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 the basket. So, but in real sense, you know, the basket can retain the water without an undercover, a shield, or maybe a bowl that can help retain the water. That's what it means to you know for a business not to have customer success. So, customer success sounds you know it's more like the protection, right? It helps you to retain customers. The idea behind customer success is to enable you retain your customers, helping them get value, right? So without customer success, it's going to be very difficult, especially in the SaaS world, it's going to be very difficult for a business to try. And I'd like to also say this, that, uh, you know, it doesn't just apply to structured businesses. You can also look at, you know, small-scale businesses, people who are also on, on this, selling on Instagram and Facebook, or that, you, know, you know, other uh, governmental institutions. So the name is, you know, small-scale business and all that. So, if the good thing about customer success is that it allows you to apply some proactive strategies to help you to engage your customer and hold them throughout the journey with you and ensure they get maximum and consistent value from your product. So that's, that's one key importance of customer success to the business. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, yes, get, get to a bit. Very, very true. Someone just said that customer service is a reactive tactic that focuses on fixing problems in order to keep customers satisfied. Very true. That is like a summary of everything that you've said uh, so far. So I want to now, uh, you know, to ask, what are the steps? What are the five things that um, someone could do? Or say, for example, I, I run a school or I own a business. What are some of the things that I can do to have? If I don't have a customer success team or I don't have like a structure around my, you know, my customer success um, uh, part of my business, how can we go about, you know, structuring what are the things that we should know, what are the things that we should do, either as an educator or as a small business owner? Great. So it's very simple. So I'll give you a very layman approach to uh, customer success and how you can help, you know, um, yeah, how you can leverage some of the uh, tips that I'm going to be sharing to help your business, uh, regardless of the size, you know, to try. So it's pretty simple. We are in the age of the experience, and customers have the power to choose who they want to do business with, right? So to start with, how do you engage as a brand? How do you engage your audience, your customers, uh, as a brand? So the first thing that you must have to do is to ensure that you, know, you understand your customers, right? So I'll, I'll give different uh, examples. So I'll give an analogy of maybe an e-commerce, right? An e-commerce business, like, you know, you are into selling, buying and selling online, you know, online shopping and all that. You know that, you know, being, up, you know, understanding what your customer's expectation is key to helping you to drive your customer journey map, right? Understanding how you can, you know, tailor the touch points, right? So, you know, you have from making orders to, you know, shipping the orders to production, to shipping the orders and to getting it delivered and to letting the client know that the order has been delivered and they, the client also confirming that they've received the order. So you need to understand what the journey map looks like. You need to understand the typical profile of your customer. Who is your customer? What are the expectations? What are the challenges? What are the, could, could be the challenges that you experience with other brands? So you understanding your customer will enable you to know how you need to tailor your customer service or customer success approach, uh, if that's me, uh, you know, to drive the engagement. So the first thing, like I mentioned, understanding who your customer is, right? So you already have, you know, analysis of what your customer behavior looks like. And then the next step, once you understand who your customers are, the next step is to now create channels, right? So because you understand who your customers are and you know how they like to interact with you, then you, you can now, you know, it will enable you to decide on which of the channels that you would like them to reach out to you. Are they educated? Are they not educated? What would be the best platform for them to reach out to you? So, for instance, it could be WhatsApp. You want them to reach out to you via WhatsApp. It could be telephone calls. It could be via CRM, having the proper CRM tools that you know you can use to channel your complaints. You know, having various channels for for, for customers to reach out to you is, is very key. So, 
the channels could be from WhatsApp, phone conversation, help with it on the website, you know, different means via Facebook, via Instagram. So you can have as many as possible channels. So that, you know, gives the customer the power to choose how they want to contact you. If I is giving a lot of voice nuggets right now, if you don't have your notepads out, you do yourself a very great injustice. I'm here with my pen and my notepad, and I'm also taking, you know, amazing notes. Yeah, you mentioned some very, really amazing things. You mentioned that to, you know, to build a an experience like now we're in the age of the experience where people buy experiences are not exactly um, the products that you're selling so you should yeah. know who your customer your customer profile what their challenges are what your what their touch point is and just generally understanding your customer so this what seems like big words right so if i um how can we break down what touch points are what um how can we that you that Break it down into small bits that are very easy, bite sized that we can just quickly chew and basically understand. Okay, but but let's before you that. take that, um, yeah. people, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, please just throw them in. We'll take them at the you know half of the other half of this session. So you can just shoot us your questions, and then if I will be more than happy to answer. So if I am, please. All right, thank you, Sonia. So. Uh... Uh, when I mean touch point, I'm, so I'm referring to different stages that your customer will reach out. So it, it varies depending on your business. So I'll give you, I'll still use the example of the e-commerce like I gave earlier on. So you have the first stage will be that the customer is, you know, is uh, surveying your your platform, trying to look for the products they want to buy. In that in that in that situation, some customers will stay and buy. Some will just scan through and look at what the pricing looks like and they will cut off. Right. So that's the first stage. That's one touch point. They are coming to view your website. So you must ensure that your website is user-friendly, is customer-centric. People can understand what content you're putting out there, the pricing. You know, they can understand the product, you know, pictures. Everything must be you know, user-friendly. Then the second stage will be that, okay, they, they are adding an item to cart and they want to check out. So you can see from, you know, searching for an item to adding to cart to, you know, checking out, completing the order, and then to receiving the confirmation, and from confirmation, they are also receiving, you know, a shipment traffic a tracking number to say that the order has been shipped out. And then from shipping tracking number, they are also receiving a notification that the order has been delivered, or they are reaching out, or they are meeting with the uh, delivery man to receive the order. So this different touch, you know, I am using this example so to better make us understand how you know it works. So those are the different touch points I was referring to. So in each of these different touch points, you need to build and get them models that best suits your customers. Understanding what the customer wants to hear or what they need to hear, what information they need to get at those different touch points is very important, is, is very key to, you know, to driving success for your business. Thank you. So for those that are just joining us, our conversation is still around customer success and how that can help you, you know, stay in business. If you've ever interacted with us here at FlexiServe, if any of our support uh, team as success team has, you know, spoken to you, you've probably at one point or another, you know, experienced the magic that is if I so if I just mentioned now that you should be able to understand like where what points are, are there that your customers you know come to uh come in contact with your business as it were is it WhatsApp is it your website is it on Instagram is it walking through your school or coming to your shop just knowing like where do they interact and then when they come what would they like to hear what are the questions that they would most likely have and then you can prepare answers for that beforehand so now coming to like you know the field the space that we play in say for educators um i have i'm looking at having conversations with parents i'm looking at having conversations with the wards in the school i'm looking at having conversations with the teachers so in a, in a sphere like that how can we um ensure that there's a success amongst you know this wide array of customers Okay, so I'll, I'll try to break it down so that at least those who are in the ethics space would, you know, better understand. So, um, whether you like it or not, the parents who own their pupils, uh, students in schools, they are your customers, right? And they are interacting then within your relationship with them. So, for instance, the child joins that, let me use secondary school, maybe at DSS1, and, you know, perhaps the explanation is that the child, you know, in, uh, complete at the junior secondary school and the senior secondary school. So there are different times where, you know, you have lights of um, the uh, parents teacher meeting where you, the parents will walk into the school to come check on their child's education, you know, to check on the status and the performance of their child to see how the child is performing. 
So that's the value that because the, 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 you know, the parents what we want to see for their child, right? So I'm using that as, as an example. So how do you drive customer service in that kind of scenario, right? The first thing that you need to do is to have someone who's going to be at maybe a desk, you know, attending to parents. Someone who's going to be available. Like I mentioned, you need to have, you know, you need to have various channels. How customers, how your, your let me use customers now. How parents can reach out to your school. So maybe they are telephone. Yeah, WhatsApp. You know, depending on the type of, you know, what your, you know, your 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 uh, parents' uh, profile looks like, right? Yeah? So you have to look at, you know, how they can reach out to you. Maybe via telephone, via, you know, um, via WhatsApp or in person. So whichever the channel is, you need to ensure that, you know, parents can, you know, have access to, you know, contacting your school. That's the first thing. Then the second step would be that, okay, so what are the most frequent issues or what are the most frequent answer uh, questions that they normally ask when they come in. So you need to have, you know, the, the, the person who is responsible for uh, uh, for interacting with the parent should have the knowledge and, you know, should have all the information that's required for them to be able to respond to uh, to, to, to the inquiries of the parents, right? Giving them for some information, right? So that's one way. So not necessarily having them to waste. For instance, we can talk about, um, let's log into edtech software. If a, a parent walks in and says, oh, I need to see what my child's performance has been for the last two terms, right? It's very easy. You have, you know, you have, you have uh, in-house solutions, like what we offer here at Trixa. So you have in-house uh, solu solutions that will help you to quickly navigate and spool that child's results, get the information that's necessary, and then avail the customer. So that experience alone is from, and, you know, it, it offers convenience to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to the group you. That's one. Then the second part will be around, you know, knowing how best to engage parents, like in terms of, you know, communicating to them at the right time. Like maybe they, you are having, you need to meet up with them, you need to have a session with them, you need to have a meeting, or you maybe your child's performance has not been, you know, has not been very good. Communicating to them, not waiting for them to go through the you know, academic performance and then spotting that the child is not doing well in mathematics. So, but you can create, you can, you can send those information in advance, educating them and telling, you know, advising them on how best they need to. Uh, help the child and what they need to do at home, and what you guys are also doing, and what the school is also doing to help that child be better. So you know all those kind of types of communication would enable you would enable you drive value for 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 parents. Okay, so just to be clear, you know, reiterate what you've said, which is an amazing thing. So what if I just did is to just already talk you through how to go about you know making sure that your customers even before they ask questions like. Communicate, 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 communicate. Imagine an example. It said, take for example, you run a school, and then your your customers are parents, you know, teachers, and then the words. You give an example of where, like, there's you have a child that is not doing fantastic. You have a as a teacher, you have a child that is not doing so well. Why wait till the end of the term for the teacher for the parents to find out that? There are some challenges. Why only wait to have it in your report card when you can have, you know, a software like what we uh, have here at FlexiServe in your school to, you know, communicate to the parents. Let them know what the challenges are so that way you can solve problems even before they arise. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, we have some questions here. Uh, somebody sent us a question and the person asked that, um, what, how can a school... How can a school adopt, since they don't exactly have like a customer service department, as it were, how can they be more active, you know, with respect to having the customer success um, mantra or mentality? So it's just very similar to the example I gave earlier on, right? Um, if you look at it in the business world, let's talk about, you know, general tech business, right? The, there are two things. Customer wants to be able to reach out to you. They want to be able to get value, and they want to be able to provide feedback to help you innovate, right? So the same approach can be also transferred or adopted in, you know, a school environment. So one, customers, your, your parents would like to be able to reach out to, to the schools, you know, having different communication channels, convenience. They want to be able to access their child's performance, and that's what we offer here at, at uh, Flexus Lab. You know, what we, what we offer is an ethic solution that enables parents, you know, convenience, you know, access their child's that's when we have what we call the parent app. That, you know, you can see at the comfort of your home, have you know the parents access their child's performance, communicate with the teacher, the you know the class teacher, you know share feedback and you know ask questions and all that. That's part of the experience we're talking about. Offering parents convenience. That's one. Then the second part is in terms of 
having someone to reach out to. Like, okay, I, I have a challenge, I need to reach out to the school. Someone must be available. One, one key part of customer service is the fact that you need to be very responsive. Having someone who is dedicated to interacting with parents in case questions, you know, inquiries come in. So you need to have someone who is, who is uh, you know, dedicated to responding to support issues. And then that individual must be someone who is friendly, right, who, who understands, you know, what the expectations of parents are and has the right information to educate them on the questions or the you know, inquiries they're making. So these two key areas would help. If you can focus on these two areas, it will help you drive value for, you know, uh, be that maybe your, your customer. I know you've mentioned this during the course of the conversation, but to just drive on this point uh, furthermore, what are your top five tips around um, having a successful uh, customer, a successful customer, you know, success uh, department and how to go about all of that? Okay, so just to understand your question, what are the five, five tips uh, that yes. you know, uh, your business can live? To give any business, yes. Be it a school owner, a small business owner, I sell bags, I have a, I have a school. I have, what are your top five tips that would not miss? Great. So the first one, like I mentioned earlier, the first one would be uh, you understanding who your customers are. Because you need to understand the behavior of your customer. Without that, you can't, you can't even determine what channel you need to deploy. You can't even understand what strategy you need to put in place. You don't know what challenges your customers are facing. You don't know how you intend to engage them. So having a clear understanding of who your customers are, uh, you know, beyond the buyer persona, that would help you to, you know, come up with initiatives to better engage them. So that's the first step. Then once, once you understand the customer, the next step would be for you to, you know, have your know, deep channel so that the customers can reach out to you. Like I mentioned earlier, I said that we are in the age of the experience and customers want to have, customers have the option to choose, right? So you must provide as many as possible options depending on your customer, uh, customer type. Right? I already gave examples of channels that you could put out there for you know, communication. So you must have different channels of communication. Customer wants to be able to reach out to you, you know, uh, you know from uh, various channels. If you have WhatsApp, you know, in my, my own experience, I've seen customers say, oh, no, I want to be able to send you WhatsApp message, send my picture, or send the issue, and then you're resolving it. How, whatever happens at the back end, I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not interested. So you need to have different channels through which the customer can reach out to you. So once you have been able to do that, then the, the third step would be to build your strategy. So by strategy, I mean having a process. So like, of course, as we know that customer success is a methodological approach to engaging and driving value to customers. So like the strategy, we mean understanding the different touch points. Like I explained already earlier, that having to draw what the, you know, the journey map looks like for your customer and the different touch points, making those engagements in between those uh, touch points seamless. Right? So once you're able to do that, the next step would be for you to create metrics that will enable you to track the engagement. Because if without that, it's, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to evaluate the performance and you know, to know how the business is doing uh, as against you know, your strategy that you deployed. So that's, that's, the, that's, a, that's a third part. Then after that, after you've been able to put in your strategy, uh, there's something I always, you know, uh, anytime I'm invited for a show like or a session like this, I always talk about. Uh, customer service as a department. People always ask, is customer service or customer success a department? It doesn't just stick to the department. When you have a strategy, you have your team, be it a DEX officer, be it a customer service person, be it a customer success person or a customer support person, it's beyond that. It's just beyond having a department. People feel that once you've created your department, then business is sorted out. No, it goes beyond that. Customer success is more like a philosophy, right? It has to revolve around the department, and that's that even from the CEO. To the, even to the gateman. So everyone needs to uh, drive the initiative towards you know, prioritizing the customer. The customer comes first. So in, in, coming up in, strategy, in, in drawing your strategy or coming up with your strategy, you must ensure that every alignment, depending on your business, so maybe you're having maybe the customer success or the customer service needs to interface with sales, needs to interface with marketing, needs to interface with engineering, you must ensure that the strategy is built around the customer. Right, so the marketing team is thinking towards the customer. How can we, how can we share resources? How can we engage the customer, you know, to help them get more value? The engineering team is thinking about how can we quickly resolve, you know, technical issues and ensure our customers are able to get value. So if I bring it down to an educational sector, it could start from, you know, teachers, could start from the head teacher, you know, we evolved, you know, there are different touch points in different businesses. Ensure that every touch point, every alignment within your team is tied or geared towards the customer. So you have to prioritize the customer and then 
everyone in the in your company or your in the business has to also prioritize customers. So it's not it's beyond just having a department. So it's it's more than a department. It's, it's more like a philosophy. You have to make it a cultural thing. People need to think that way. People need to think. People need to believe that the customer is a is a person that you need to you prioritize when you're resolving issues. How can we make it like how can we make the life of the customer easier? So when you think that way, it's not just sitting at a department. The most of the person is the customer is fantastic or having interactions with. They would enjoy that same experience that they enjoy with the customer service department. So once you have that structure in place, that's important. Like I mentioned, the fifth one is to um, is to you know have data. You have to find a way to tie you know you know from for a structured business, you be around you know understanding what uh, uh, data points you need to track. Like maybe it can be from how many requests we received, how many council orders have we received. How many process all that which is why are they dropping? You know, trying to understand why customers are doing business with you and why customers are not doing business with you. That would enable you to improve your processes and ensure that you can you, know, you can you can help customers you know achieve value or you get maximum satisfaction, a positive experience from your business. So that's five key steps I've already listed out. But I'll put an item on the cake. The, the item of what I'll be putting on the cake is it's around feedback. So uh, you know. Currently, uh, uh, recently, uh, we like to say that in, in today's time, people, uh, the customer behavior is changing, right? The, the, uh, the, the economy or the world, the business world that we know yesterday, we used to know two years back, is different from the business world we currently know now. So, like I mentioned, it's the age of the experience. Customers want to have the power to choose, right? They are, they are kids, they are requests, they are choice. You know, it, it's changing every day. So you need to find a way to uh, always get feedback from your customers. Right, getting to hear where areas where you're doing very well, areas where you're doing very well, and how you can improve the business. Trust me, you realize that feedback, those negative feedback they're giving to you, will enable you to improve your service delivery and ensure you're able to deliver optimum and positive uh, experience to your customers. Okay, just to thank you so much for that, Ifayin. Just to run down, so uh, the five top tips. One is to understand your customer again. Just know it's beyond what you are selling. Be it. Uh, a software or um, a physical product or you run a school, just understand the people that are buying from you. Uh, the second one was you said to have options. So the idea is don't say that, okay, me or this is my school. It's only when you walk through our doors that you are going to come and hear about us. Put yourself out there. Have a number of channels that people can contact you by. For example, as Jackie said here, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have the customer success team, we have LinkedIn, we have Facebook, we have the website. The more um, contact points you have to be able to see and do business with you, the better. Uh, then the third one was to build your strategy. Have the plan around how you want to serve the people that you are currently catering for. And the fourth one, which is my personal favorite, is that customer success is not a department. It's a philosophy. It is as simple as making sure that the gateman or the cleaner or the office assistant, every single person knows that in this your business, so the customer is king. The customer is who we are all here to serve. So once the customer, once you have that, once you have that at the back of your mind, it means that everybody has a um, solution-driven, you know, mentality to be able to help the customer solve, you know, their problems and just to serve them the best that they can. Then the fifth one was to track, 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 track. Gather as much data as possible, right? And then the uh, sixth, the icing that uh, the benevolent, if I decided to give us, was to take feedback. That is, it is one thing to uh, do all of this, but there is also the out the arm of knowing that what you're doing is what the customer would like to have done. Don't exactly serve me without listening to me based on what I want, what my problems are, what is working, what is not working, what should be introduced, what should be not introduced, and all of and all of that. I know that um, there's this saying that is the longest, um, what's the word now? Longest uh, argument or longest uh, conversation between like, you know, customers and business owners. They always say customer is always right. Is this really a true thing? And if yes, how can this, how can this be, you know, worked around? Because there are some times when customers really can um, try, you know, business owners. So how, how, what are your tips on how to go about that in order to remain a successful business? Very tricky question, Sonia. <laughs> so I get this question a lot. Um, yes, I would say that customers are always right. 
uh, because, you know, like you mentioned, customer is king. You have to prioritize customers. Um, when it comes to addressing issues around, you know, uh, you know, I'll give you an instance. So perhaps you've just deployed a new solution to a customer and then you've trained them and they're unable to utilize the service. And maybe it's a subscription-based business. And after one month, uh, they are unable to, you know, get value, and they have to refuse to reach out to me to say, "Look, I'm having a problem," or "Look, I don't understand how I can navigate the platform of distribution." And they come back to you and tell you, "I'm not subscribing." In fact, I want you to refund the money at the earlier place for the previous month. I'm not interested. Why? Right. Because the customer is right, and that's why, you know, I, you know, it's advisable to, you know, to apply customer success methodology to engaging your customer because if you are applying that. You would at different points in time engage the customer, understand where they are doing well, where they're underperforming, and you know ensure they're able to get value. So when they come to you for such a company, you need to agree, right? Because you need to accept that okay, yes, we've thought it. How can we make it better, right? You need to promise them. You need to listen to their company. What are their challenges? Like you remember, I mentioned in the initial stage that you need to understand who your customers are. So for for, for people like us, like business like us, we know that some of our customers are. Uh, not, they, are, they are not tech savvy, they are more of the traditional approach. And we've seen cases where customers would have challenges in you know, understanding products and then they abandon it. So what we do is to, you know, is to proactively engage them, share the resources as, as much as possible, resources that we can, we can share with them, ensure that they're able to get value. And when they come to us with companies like that, we try to understand their pain points, understand you know, the challenge they're having. You know, it's a bit difficult uh, you know, for them to navigate that, to you know, start you know, adopting uh, digital technology. So what we do is, you know, you could offer discounts, right? We've seen cases where we offer discounts and say, okay, you know what, subscribe for the next uh, subscription. Maybe we'll offer you 20 or 30 percent discount. And we would also ensure that you're able to utilize the solution, right? And then having someone dedicated to managing that customer and ensuring they're able to get value based on what brought them to, this, to your business. So for, you know, in a small, maybe it's a small case, a small sale business, always say, oh, this shoe, uh, it's not my size, how can I, you can, you can offer refunds, right? You can offer replacement. You can offer voucher. You know, try as much as possible to satisfy the customer. Look for means. You know, you know, depending on the business. I just gave an example. Depending on your business, you need to find out something that works for you, right? You need to please the customer because if you lose one customer, it's as, it's, it's as good as you losing ten customers. So your existing customers are very key to your business because they are the ones who have experienced the product and they would in turn give negative or positive feedback to your brand. So you must always find a way and find options to help make their life better and make them happy. Okay, you, so you've said a lot of amazing things. I have a comment here that I'm going to quickly get to. Um, uh -huh. But before I, I quickly get to this comment, you mentioned something really amazing that I, I, I quickly took note of. You mentioned, uh, in summary of everything that you said, you did mention that a problem, any problem that is raised by the, um, any problem that is raised by the customer is one that has to be solved. Either you find a partnership or find a way to do it, any problem. So that means that for every single, I mean, for the customers of Plexus, would that testify, would testify to that, that so that there's an issue that is sent in here, we don't rest until it is solved, right? Uh, but then there's a comment here that says that, I believe customer is king, but they are not always right. What, do you, what would you say to that? Yes, the customer is king. They are always right, but you can't put it to their face because if you do that, then you're going to lose customers. So the idea is to educate them. So that's where the customer success strategy comes into play, right? Educate them without necessarily being confrontational, right? Educate them. Let them know what the process is like. What, let them know what the expectation is. Let them know what to do at the different touch points. That's why I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, session, I mentioned creating your strategy, having a plan on how to properly engage your customers. You can have it 100%. At some point, customers would, 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 would drop off, right? But if you have... A way is like a communication cadence or an engagement cadence to ensure that you're able to engage them. Then you will like to have a very you know little, maybe a small percentage of those calls that will have that issue, right? So, but you can't put it on their face. That's the bottom line. You have to find a way to engage them, educate them, provide as much as possible resources, make sure that you exhaust all options to you know to have them you know have them have what they need to succeed. I'll put it that way. Well said, Usman. Usman mentioned that. Uh... I, I'm just in line with what you said. Uh, Usman mentioned that, you know, for you to be able to, even if the customer is king, you have to learn how to be the king maker. So that is like you've already played in line with, you know, the issues that they are going to have. You're able to, you know, de-escalate situations, listen to them, know what is value to them and be ready to give that at every single 
points. Okay, so then the next question that I have here is with respect to the escalating situations. So it is, you've already mentioned how we can go about, you know, understanding our customers, making sure that customer service is a mentality that goes from top to bottom, bottom to top. Everybody is always thinking about the customer. How can we solve their problems? What issues do they have? What are the reoccurring issues? And uh, then this person, uh, question is about de-escalating situations. How do you, how can you, um, you know, de-escalate situations when things have gone, you know, AWOL or out of, out of control? Interesting question. All right. So uh, when it comes to uh, uh, satisfied customer, right? Um, when you when you when you have such a situation, the first thing you need to do is to first understand what the issue is all about before you engage the customer. Where at what point is the customer dissatisfied? Because you need to you need to arm yourself with as much information as possible, so that when you're going on the call, you have you know clearly identified you know options or plan. You clearly have a plan on how to resolve that issue. Right. It might not, it's not custom stone because sometimes you realize when you have that conversation with the customer, then you might have to come up with you know, a, a different option on how to resolve the issue. So by understanding, this, understanding the problem and having you know, a clear plan on how to resolve it would arm you with the right information to engage that customer. And then the next step would be for you to call the customer. So when you call or you're engaging or you're interacting, maybe you know, it's a one-on-one, maybe it's a critical meeting, you need to listen to the customer. Listening is an effective skill. It's one key skill that one major skill in customer to say that you know every you know if you are looking to hire someone in customer service or in customer support or success, that's one key skill you need to you need to ensure that you know that person has uh, that person would have. So you need to be able to listen to the customer. Allow the customer vent. Customer will come with come to you with their frustration. They will complain and say a lot of things. In fact, somebody in my own experience, someone would even insult you. You are not the business, but you are a representation of the business, right? representative of the business, they would say a lot of, lot of things uh, uh, you know, to, uh, at you, and then you would just have to, what you need to do is just to listen to them, let them vent, let them pour out the anger, because when you do that, you put them at ease, that, okay, someone is even listening to me, okay, I think this guy is trying to understand the problem I'm having. But when you, when you suggest them, then you're not, you're not doing that conversation good, right? You're even expanding or confounding the problem. So you need to listen to the customer, allow them vent. When they vent, then you can now paraphrase and try to understand that you try to you know, recap the, the issue based on what feedback is given to you, just to clearly you know, agree that you understand what the customer is facing, what challenge the customer is facing. And once the customer confronts, you can now share options on how you want to resolve the issue. The customer, I'm, I'm telling you from experience, the customer says, okay, no, I want this, but I want this, right? Sometimes, in most cases, you always have, you know, you always have a resolution right on the call. In some cases, you might have to get back internally, and as a customer service person or the service customer service person, you need to advocate for the customer and you know try to drive you know drive the conversation as to what the customer's expectation is, and see how you can help you know how you can help that customer do that. If it means not you know meeting the customer halfway, that that kind of that solution that would work, and then getting back to the customer. So the first is you know having options, and then the customer agrees that okay, I'm going with option A, and that works for me, and then you resolve the issue. Then the second uh, option would be around getting back to the customer. It's something that you can resolve right on the spot, right? You're telling the customer, I didn't end up in four hours, so you can get to my internal team and then resolve the issue. So within that 24 hours uh, timeline, you need to find a way to consistently engage the customer. So maybe you can say every three hours, I need to reach out to the customer, let them know that I'm currently working on resolving this issue. This is, the, this is at what state I am. This is, this is what I'm doing. This, this is the object I've gotten, but I'm just to get a, a resolution. What I'm working on just giving them that, you know, communicate like you mentioned, always communicate. Let them know what the object is, let them know what the status of the issue is, and then getting back with them to them with the feedback on how you're able to drive you know, to get to, to get the, the right result and then share that result with them. I'm telling you first and from my own experience, I've had customers who, you know, I've had to reach out to them, you know, uh, after I've been giving them some timelines and then they come back to tell me that no, this is the best customer service experience I've ever had. They in some of those difficult customers most likely turn out to be your, your favorite and uh, favorite customer or advocate of your brand. So that's that I hope that answers um, your question, the person that sent in that question. So it's, it just said that the difference between your difficult customer and your might be your best customer is just being able to 
communicate sometimes it, it appears as though people are being difficult it's most likely because of a bridge in communication either you don't understand what their problem is or they don't understand the solutions that you're trying to prefer so as much as possible communicate 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 i like how everything you find has been saying has been you know being tied back to to each other which is listen to your customers communicate with them make sure that you do not um leave any engagement with that has you know issues raised without solving these problems because i mean the the conversation or the way the saying goes that um the best ways to make money is to solve problems the more problems you solve the more money that you can make so that would uh that's that is uh, amazing i saw one comment that i want to quickly read i'm trying to scroll through it but I can't seem to um, locate it right now. I can't seem to... Um, oh, okay. Someone, I, I just saw the very last comment saying building rapport with your customers. Ultimately, because your customers are... It's almost like you're in a relationship with your customers, right? It's, it's not always smooth and rosy every time. But then if there's a rapport, there's an understanding, you know what they want, you know what they need, you are always, you know, they know that you are in their corner. It's not like... You are all all about the profit or all about the money making. You are also trying to solve problems and deliver value. You would definitely, definitely, definitely um, be continue to be in business and you know have profit. That is primarily our trick here. You know at Flexisev that has helped us stay in business for over ten years. So um, we can. So before we wrap this up, uh, since we don't have any other questions, if I what would be like your in your last uh, comments before we call it a wrap. So I know I've already given you know, tips, I've already shared tips on how you can structure your customer service department or support department or customer success department. But one, uh, one thing I would like to leave with everyone that is going into this session is the fact that um, customer service or su success or support is not a departmental thing. It, is, it does not rest on the department. It's a philosophy that drives how a business you know, uh, you know, interacts with the customers. Like I mentioned, it goes beyond, oh, it's the thing thing. It starts with, with the morning citizen or the morning employee or with the CEO and down to the gate man. And it's so that everyone prioritizes the customers. It starts on the working. That experience makes the customer feel wild, right? Engage them, provide feedback, be, re be respectful. You know, be available, be responsive, right? Provide the right resource at the right time. Be there when they need you, right? So these are, these are the key things that would help you you know, um, uh, derive value from, you know, from, you know, from whatever, you know, product offerings that you, you put out there to offer to your customers. Thank you so much for that, If I We just have one last question that just came in now. I just said we should quickly take it before, you know, we go. Uh, the question goes thus, on the difference between customer service and customer success, are there organizations and are there organizations that separate these teams or it's a new norm to have a fusion into uh, customer success? So it's a new norm, like you mentioned, right? You know, uh, from my experience, you know, you're already used to customer service. People usually provide phone numbers, you know, having, you know, a call center environment where people can reach out to you. But customer success is a different ideology, right? A new ideology. You can imagine from the advent of, of COVID, right? You are at the comfort of your home. How do you engage? You can't walk into a, you can't walk into a business to go and ask questions. You can you can have someone who run you to a practical session. But with customer success at work, you would have, you know, a dedicated customer success manager who would hold you throughout the journey with, with that business. So it's a totally different thing. And most business that understands the importance of customer success differentiates customer success from support, as you may call it, customer service. So the customer success people are focused on building the relationship and expanding the business. While the support people are more reactive, they are, they are supporting the customers and providing, you know, reactive service once. You know, those leads arrive. But the focus of the cost of the customer success is more, you know, retention, you know, building a better relation and expanding the business. I hope that answers your question. I, I hope so too. Uh, so uh, I hope that answers your question, Palumi. The, so the summary of everything that Ifani just said is the customer success team are more preventive. So they are thinking about uh, before it happens, how can we prevent it? How can we, what are the issues that our customers might have? Even before, so it's, it's Back to you know the very first thing that you mentioned where you said that with customer success it is proactive it is not just with customer service they wait for the issues to come and then they try to solve them when they arise but with customer success you are also thinking of okay what issues oh yes you already said it answers the question thank you they are already thinking of 
what issues can we what issues can we um before they arise, what will happen? Say, for example, say I have a school. I know that my parents, my the parents that um, are, that are the guardians of the world that will be coming to my school, what issues would they have? They would like to know how their children are doing. They would like to know how they are doing in school. They would like to know what the grades are. They would like to know, is this child um, good with PE? Does this child like mathematics? Does this like, child like English? As against waiting as what, what it was before now, where you have to wait for the report cards at the end of the month, or maybe when they have open days. There are softwares, like uh, the solutions that we offer here at FlatterServe, that help you to stay you know, on top of these things. Even before the uh, problems arise, you're already you know, solving them. You, you run a store that sells... Um, say shoes or you sell clothes or you sell confectionaries you know that the questions that people would have would be um, what does it look like what does it taste like what do people think about it you start to you know put those things out there giving them resources making sure that the things that they need to you know make their decisions or to stay happy are always at their fingertips so these are some of the things that you can do irrespective of wherever field you know you find yourself to run a very successful business. If I look like you want to say something. Yes, let me add something. So I, I, I understand the Perimis question. So you are trying to understand how do you how do you you know how you you know prevent it preventing your approach, right? So you realize that from your relationship building, right? So um, you know when it comes to customer relationship management, it involves interacting, consistent interaction. So I will call you and say, look, I'm calling, I'm calling you today to know how you're doing with, 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 with that solution. Are you having any challenges, any problems? Mind you, at that point, the customer has a real an issue. In, more, in my experience, you realize that customers say, oh, look, I have an issue. I've not been able to do this. But they've not had time to raise the support again. So by, that, by doing that, you, you can you know, practically understand, you know, identify the issue the customer is having, solve it, solving it, and not even necessarily raising the support again. So when you continue to build that relationship, you know what... What the business, yeah, what the customer is trying to achieve, and you can know how best to onboard them to, you know, to get in value. So from that process, you would realize that you will be identifying issues along the line, right? So what we do at Flex is that we have what we call the health check. It helps us to keep tab of the health of our customers and also to proactively reach out and to proactively resolve any challenges that you may be facing. Thank you so much, uh, Ifai. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, even if you don't take anything else out of today's session. Please do not forget these five key, sorry, six key things that you know, Ifani has already shared with us. Number one is to know your customers. Number two is to ex have options, have different ways in which your customers can reach out to you and for you to also reach out to your customers. Um, the third one being have a strategy, have a plan. So like what the last thing that Ifani mentioned, which is like to so have, you know, stay in contact with them. There are times when your customers might not even call you. Just check up on them. I mean, there are times when I have some vendors that I use that reach out to me and I feel like as you are concerned about me, not only just about my money. Do health checks. Like uh, Ifani mentioned, uh, like what we do here at FetiSelf. Just call up. How are you doing? You have the solution going or how is the product going? Even if it's a DM, if you don't have, you know, the infrastructure or the team, as it were, to... Um, to do these phone calls, WhatsApp messages, or even emails, if you have their emails, just check up on them. Health check, like it says, when you do check up for yourselves, to make sure that you are healthy and you are fine. Also do health checks with your relationships with your customers to make sure that all things, you know, is going on well and they're happy, you know, with your service. Number four is to prioritize your customer. Like, they are the, I mean, without them, you're not, there's no business for you to run anyways. So prioritize them, prioritize their needs. And the last one, the I said, was to always take feedback. Um, so on that note, we would um, call it a wrap on today's uh, uh, edition of uh, South Combos. It's the main edition. So everybody that joined us, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome. We'll be having this, you know, from time to time to just have conversations around um, the situations and things that could help us, you know, better serve and also just to help you know, our community and have conversations also with you. So from time to time, we'd have uh, questions up to know what are the things that you'd like for us to discuss, what are the things that you'd like to learn from us. And in the meantime, you can visit our website. There are a lot, a ton of resources that you can find there that you can apply to uh, your businesses. Uh, if I, if they have further questions, how can they contact you? Okay, so um, on LinkedIn, you can search for me, find uh, Umoke, or you can send me an email directly at ifine.umoke at outlook.com. I don't know, did you get that? Yes. 
uh, what we'll do is when we because we're going to save this session where we'll that we'll put um, how you can be contacted. So if you have further questions around customer success or what we do here, you know, at Flexi Self, shoot us a DM, send us an email. We'll be more than happy to hear from you. And I'm sure that if I will be more than happy to answer as many questions as you have. So on that note, uh, this is Sonia again, like I said at the beginning of the session. Thank you for joining us. I will see you same time or maybe not at the next uh, session. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you for your time. <laughs> Bye.